Hi guys, welcome back. This is Professor Hank, and in this video, I'm going to talk to you about type conversion in C++. So let's get started, right? So what is type conversion? Type conversion is what happens in the language when you try to perform certain operations on uh, operands of different data types. So example, what are you going to get if you try to add an integer and a double? Right? So doubles have decimal places, integers don't. So what's going to be the result of an integer plus a double? Okay, that's one example. Another example is what happens if you try to assign an integer variable or value to a uh, float, right? Or to a double. Those are different data types. So what's actually going to get stored in memory? So when you talk about type conversion, you're talking about the rules within a language that kind of govern how that's going to play out. Okay, so let's go ahead and go through the rules and uh, at the end I'll give you a short programming example to show or to demonstrate the rules in action okay so again starting off C++ is gonna want to have operands be the same type right so you know if you got X plus Y C++ wants the X and the Y to be the same right so if they're different than C++ it's going to implicitly convert them right so if you've got a double and an int according to the rules of the language you know one of those either the double or the int are going to be converted into the other right just for the purposes of that calculation okay and this is important because it can impact the results of calculations so you kind of have to keep these rules in mind All right so the conversion is done according to a types hierarchy or a hierarchy of data types and this hierarchy is arranged, um, the data types in it, by the largest number that the data type can hold. So at the top here, in this uh, of these that I have listed, you've got long double, right? And then you have double and then float and then all the way down to ints, right? So for example, unsigned ints are higher up in the hierarchy over an int because an unsigned hint can hold a larger positive number than a regular int can, right? Remember, unsigned ints, since they can't store negative numbers, then they're free to use all of their bits for a bigger positive number, okay? So here's some terms for you. We've got promotion and we've got demotion. So when a data type that's lower on the hierarchy gets converted as a, or into a data type that's higher up on the hierarchy, that's called promotion. Right, so if the expression has got uh, a double and an int, and then the int was to get converted into the double, that's an example of promotion. So demotion is just the opposite, right? Where you have um, maybe a double being converted into an int, all right? So let me throw a couple more rules at you here, and then we'll do a short programming example and get you out of here. So characters, shorts, unsigned shorts, they are all automatically promoted to int no matter what, okay? No matter what the other operand is. With values of different data types, the lower one on the hierarchy is going to get promoted. So if you've got an int plus a double as part of your expression, then it's gonna be the int that gets temporarily promoted for the purposes of that expression into a double, okay? Uh, all right, and so the assignment operator when you have an expression say x equals five right then whatever's on the right hand side that type is going to be converted to whatever is on the left hand side so if you've got um x equals five and x is a double and five is an integer then the five is going to get promoted to to a double so it's going to be treated as 5.0 and then it's going to be that 5.0 that gets assigned to the variable all right so Let's go ahead and um, take a look at a programming example. And uh, then we'll be done, okay? All right, so here we go. I'll start off with an example of uh, demotion first, right? So we'll do demotion first. So let me type that up, some comments here, demotion. Okay, so this should be pretty straightforward. Um, so let's say that I have double D uh, or or int. Let's say int d equals 5.76, right? And then I'll see out d. 
Okay, so what are you gonna see on the screen? Well, you're not gonna see 5.76, you're gonna see five, okay? Why? Well, because this was demotion. So what's the data type on the left-hand side of the assignment operator, int? What's the data type of the operand on the right-hand side? Well, double. In this situation, when using the assignment operator, the right-hand side is gonna become the data type of the left-hand side. So that 5.76 is gonna get converted into an integer. Well, integers don't have decimal places. So the decimal places were truncated and then that five is what was assigned um, to D. All right, so that's an example of D motion. Okay, and um, that can happen not just as a result of literals. I mean, you could have something like this, um, 3.0 divided by 2.0, right? And you know, what's 3.0 divided by 2.0? It's gonna be 1.5, right? But that 1.5 is gonna get converted into an integer. And so when that happens, the decimal places are gone and it's the one that got stored inside of the D, okay? And um, it's not just, you know, this just doesn't happen with, with literals. It can also happen with um, variables, right? So double um, G, okay, and I'll assign to that uh, 1.75, okay? So if I was to assign G to D, right? It's G, it's a double, but it's gonna get demoted into an integer. So that 1.75 is gonna become one, and that's what's gonna get assigned to int D, right? So how do you fix that, right? You make sure that both sides are the same, okay? So, there you go. Now, um, maybe, maybe I did that a little too fast. There you go. Okay. So um, now with the assignment operator, you can also do promotion, right? So for example, you know, if I have double uh, D equals five, right? Or um, I say int X equals five and then I assign to D X, right? So X is the integer, D is the double, doubles higher up on the hierarchy. So X is gonna get treated um, as a double. It's gonna get converted into a double. And so that five is gonna become 5.0 and that's what's gonna be assigned to D. And um, now that's what's gonna be stored there. Now we only see five because CL by default doesn't show you the decimal places, right? We'd have to format the output to see them, but that's what happens. This is an example of promotion, okay? All right, so that's with the assignment operator. So let me show you an example um, of promotion using, you know, the, an arithmetic operator, okay? So let us say that we wanted to divide five and two, okay? So, and then we'll display D, all right? So what's gonna happen? We're gonna see two, right? Why are we seeing two? because five divided by two is two. You're like, no, it's not, it's 2.5. It is when you're doing integer division, right? The integer divided by an integer is an integer. So five divided by two normally would be 2.5, but since it's an integer, integers don't have decimal places, so the 0.5 is gone, so we got our two, right? Now that two got promoted to a double, right? But it's still two, it's still 2.0, right? We lost our decimal places before we even uh, assigned the value, the result, to the variable. Okay, now what if we had on the left-hand side of this expression a double? Okay, now this is gonna be a situation where you've got promotion. Okay, you've got a double here on the left-hand side, you got an integer on the right-hand side, and C++ wants them to be the same. So this is also an example of promotion. What's gonna happen is, is that C++ is gonna look at this and go, oh, okay, two different data types, who's lower on the hierarchy, the two is, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna treat it as if it were, I'm gonna promote it to um, 2.0, to a double, right? And so then when it does that, 5.0 divided by 2.0 is now doing floating point division. And so the result of 5.0 divided by 2.0 is 2.5. 2.5 is a double. D is a double, so no conversion happens, and the 2.5 gets stored inside of D, and we see our 2.5 when we print out the contents 
of D. Now you could still have D motion happen, right? So what happens if I change D into an integer? Okay, well, on the right hand side, everything's gonna play out just like before. But then when it comes time to deal with the assignment operator, then that 2.5 is gonna get demoted, that double's gonna get demoted into an integer, cutting off the decimal places. So we end up with two, and that's what's gonna get stored inside of D, okay? So you really have to make sure that you got all of your data types lined up. And um, this isn't just gonna be for, as I was saying before, for literals. You could also have this be the case with variables as well. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, let's do x divided by y. Now that's an integer divided by an integer. We're back to that again. And so what are we going to have? 2 because integer 5 divided by integer 2, x holds 5, y holds 2, is going to give you um, 2, right? Because the point 0.5 is going to get cut off, right? So how could we fix this? Okay, well, change x and y both to doubles would fix it, right? And if you do that, okay, if all we did was that, then what happens? Well, the five is an integer being assigned to X. So the five gets promoted to a double because X is a double. And so it's 5.0 that gets assigned to X. And similarly, the two gets promoted to 2.0 and that gets assigned to Y. So now we have a double divided by a double, right? We got 5.0 divided by 2.0. That 2.5 is preserved and assigned to D and we print out D. Okay, but what if we kept them both integers. What else could we do? The last example. Okay, and you wanna keep those variables. What you could do is you could do something like this, right? Multiply the X times 1.0, because as you know, anything times one is itself. But here's the thing. Multiplication and division have the same precedence in the order of operations. So when that's the case, you proceed from left to right. So the multiplication is going to resolve first, then the division. So this is going to result in this cascading um, conversion effect that's going to happen, a, a, a chain of promotions. Okay, so x times 0, or x times 1.0, excuse me, happens first. Okay, now what data type is x? Int, what data type is 1.0? Double. So the x is going to get promoted. Okay, so that five that was in X, that integer five, that's gonna get promoted to 5.0, okay? Times 1.0 on the left-hand side divided by Y. Okay, so then the 5.0 times 1.0 is 5.0 divided by Y, okay? Now here comes the next conversion that's gonna happen. Now what's Y, an integer? What's 5.0, a double? So the Y is gonna get promoted from an integer to a double. So what was inside y? Integer two. So what does that become? 2.0. Okay, hopefully you're following along. If not, you can rewind, you know, hit the, hit the rewind button or whatever. And then the result of 5.0 divided by 2.0 is 2.5, right? As you can see, there's your answer. Okay, so that's an example of promotion. And then of course, if we set D, to a integer, then we're back to having demotion again, right? Because that 2.5 got demoted down to an integer when it was being assigned to int d, right? So this can be, these rules, they can, they can trip you up, right? You, you have to pay attention when you're creating your statements to make sure that all of your data types um, are correct to be able to handle all of the operations that you want to have occur, right? You want to make sure that you don't lose any precision anywhere. You got to make sure you got a variable that's the right data type. You got to make sure that, you know, the expression that you're taking into account, um, all of these rules and what, what could happen. Because, you know, if you, I just change that to an integer here, all of this is just going to result in an integer, right? Because X is still an integer, X times one, integer times an integer is an integer, so this is gonna be the integer five divided by Y well, is still an integer, two. There's no promotion going on here, demotion. So you're gonna end up with your two here, and then when that two gets assigned to D, well, then you have promotion there, right? Because D is a double, but the result here is two. So you gotta make sure 
that you are keeping track of all this stuff, okay? And it's really easy to forget or to miss something and then end up with an answer that you didn't expect. So, you know, if you were expecting something like 2.5 in your output and you got something like two, then chances are you screwed up with your data type somewhere along the way, either the variable data type or um, this phenomenon here where, you know, you don't have the right uh, promotion going on or you end up with integer division when you wanted floating point division and, and so on, okay? All right, so that's everything that I wanted to show you uh, in this video. Um, let me go back and we'll summarize what we talked about. Okay, so what did we talk about? Type conversion. There's rules that, get, that uh, govern how data types are treated, okay? So, you know, C++ wants those operands to be the same type when you're doing an operation with an operator. If they're different, C++ converts them implicitly. And that conversion is done according to a hierarchy of types that are ranked by the biggest number that any data type can hold. You've got promotion and demotion that can happen. Um, for just about all of the operators, you know, it's going to be promotion. Whichever of the data types of the different data types is lower on the hierarchy, they get promoted to match the one that's higher up. Uh, with the exception of the assignment operator, then the right hand side is going to be changed, either promoted or demoted. It's going to be converted to whatever the data type is on the left hand side. Now, if the right hand side's a double, if the left hand side's a double, there's not going to be any conversion there, right? As long as they match, then there's no problem. These rules aren't going to kick in. It's just when the data types of the operands are different that these rules are going to apply. Okay, so thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Okay, so that's going to bring this video to a close. If you felt that the video was useful, please consider giving the video a thumbs up. And if you thought that the video sucked, well, then you've got that thumbs down button as an option as well. If you'd like to see more videos, if you're interested in more content from the channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button. And as usual, if you're a student of mine and you have further questions, feel free to drop me an email or to stop by my office hours. Okay, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.